Well, 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 Trickster Shadow. About a year after you said you were done with DBD, you came crawling back. Yeah, it would appear so. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, I've been playing DBD again for the past, like, probably three months. I'm taking a little bit of a break from VHS. I'm waiting for some improvements to be made. No longer rewinder. I stepped down from that. Uh, and I'm just, just waiting for VHS to, to get a little bit better, get a little bit more content, player base to come back a little bit before I start playing it too much again. And I've actually really been enjoying a lot of the changes that DBD has been making, especially within like the last six, seven months. Uh, I think they've been making a lot of good changes. And it's honestly a lot of stuff that I've wanted for the game for a long time and that I've been advocating. I even made a video, made a big document at this point, probably like a year and a half, two years ago, about my basically wish list for DBD. And a lot of the stuff from that wish list, I'm not saying that like they got all the ideas from me, but a lot of stuff from the wish list, I'm seeing like either like iterations of it or just straight up like ideas that I had uh, are getting implemented to the game. And I'm actually really happy with the direction that DB is going a lot happier than I was last year. And so I wanted to go over the dev update, talk about this because I already like kind of skimmed through it and it looked like I had a lot of good stuff. Uh, so let's go through it. And I think I'm going to start steering my content back to DBD. I may play VHS every once in a while on this channel. because I want to start reviving this channel a little bit because I had to take a break because of my mental health. My mental health got really bad towards the uh, like towards fall of this last year but i want to start getting back into the things uh, i'll probably play vhs every once in a while but probably gonna be sticking with dbd a little bit more from now on they say happy new year the team's back from the holidays uh survivor activity hut so this is something that i suggested to them uh quite a while probably like a year and a half ago i made a big like, list of stuff that i would wanted to see in the game uh i, I know some developers saw it uh which of course they could have already been working on stuff similar to this uh, and so, like, it may not be entirely just me that they got the idea from. But uh, this was one of the changes that I said would be really good for the game because there's a big gap of knowledge between solo queue and swifts. And it's kind of bad that that gap exists, and it's going to be hard to bounce the game as long as that information gap exists. So they talk about how if you're in solo queue, it's hard to communicate than if you're playing in a team. Last year, we shared early design. So last year, I think, like, towards the end of last year, like the beginning of last year or something, something like that. Uh, or not towards the end of the last year. The, the Before last year started, I think, they showed like a uh, like a mock-up, like something that they wanted to do. And it was uh, an activity HUD. It was little uh, icons. So basically what they want to do is when a survivor is repairing a generator, opening an execute, healing, mending, recovering, sensing or busting a totem, uh, searching a chest, or killer-specific actions, such as snapping out of it from the doctor, uh, waking up from Freddy, stuff like that. They want to have this, where if you can't see, we'll zoom in a little bit. There's, there's these little icons that you can see. This Vittorio is cleansing a totem, so it has a little totem next to him. This Jeff uh, has little like mini entity claws that are next to him, which is going to be new. It, every time that somebody gets chased, they're going to have the little entity claws, or if they're obsession, then they'll have the claws anyways. So you can see who is getting chased uh, whenever. And so it gives you a better idea of like, oh, well, like, do I need to go for the save? Oh, that person's being chased. I know this other person's down. Do I need to go for the save? It gives you a little bit more contact clues that you can come off of. Uh, and then this person's searching chests. This person's doing a generator. And so I think this is huge. This is very good information. And I think this is a really good place to kind of like, it won't completely bring solo queue up to the swift level in terms of like making them like equally powerful. But it, it lessens the gap, and it will make it easier to balance the game from here on out. So it's really good that they're doing this. Uh, and they talk about the entity clause and everything. And uh, why these actions? They want to bridge the gap between solo queue and pre-mades, which is very good. I specifically want to avoid anything that could give already coordinated groups an advantage. Which I could see this helping out Swifts a little bit. Only the Swifts are where like, people are playing more casual. But like if... If you're like already like a hardcore Swift that's trying to like win every game, I don't think this is going to really help you all that much. So yeah, it, it's really good. Uh, they talk about the updated wiggle mechanics. So the updated wiggle tab has been there since last year, which is the uh, skill checks. Roughly 83% of players currently opted into the wiggle beta, probably because of giving blood points at the beginning. And then they say that it's going to be officially integrated in the game. And as a result, the beta tab or the beta will disappear from the betas tab in 6.5. Uh, there are a couple of changes that will be made when it goes live. 
first, we are removing the fast wiggle progression from great skill checks. Hitting all great skill checks could shave off a whole second of time from wiggling. While this sounds small, it can make a difference between wiggling free and getting hooked. Rather than increase wiggle speed, great skill checks will increase the amount the killer sways while carrying you by 20%. Great skill check zo success zones have also been increased in size since they now have less impact. The skill checks, on the other hand, still bump the killer by 50% less than previously normal. So I have a little bit of an issue with this. Uh, I could see, I, I think, like, out, out of the gate, people are going to run, like, boil over with this. Because whenever a change happens, people want to, like, use that change, like, to the like, furthest extent that they can, and then they'll probably stop using boil over as much. But because, like, the one... I hope that you can still use the the previous wiggling system because I, as far as I know, this is supposed to be an accessibility thing and forcing people to use the skill checks like, kind of like flies in the face of accessibility. So that was one thing I hope happens. And two, I don't like that it messes with the controls more because that could make the game less accessible for killer. Uh, I understand like they're, they're saying that they think that the wiggling out a whole second sooner if you hit all the great skill checks is maybe a little bit too much, but I feel like it really wasn't as big of a deal, personally. Um, I guess we'll have to see something that we'll have to check out and see, and the PTB is going to be tomorrow, so we're going to check it out. Uh, second, they added a new sound for non-attempts. So basically, like, if you're dead on hook, uh, if you don't want to wiggle because you're just going to die anyways, it would play, like, a really jarring sound every time you miss a skill check. And so now they're making a more subtle sound, so it's not as annoying. And they cleaned up the... We've cleaned up the new system's interaction with Decisive Strike. Previously, the Wiggle skill checks would start immediately after Decisive Strike skill checks. This caught a lot of people off guard and caused some confusion. There's now a short 0.5 second delay after the Decisive Strike skill check where Wiggle skill check appears. It'll be credited a small amount of Wiggle progress to make up for the added delay. And so basically, when you hit a, um, or like when your Decisive Strike thing comes up, uh, it'll have a little bit of delay before you start wiggling, but you'll be refunded some of that wiggle barred because you weren't able to do the wiggling immediately that's good quality of life stuff and the nurse the nurse is getting nerfed With right hands nurse no doubt the strongest killer in the game though so, uh, she has a steep learning curve uh not much can stand between a good nurse and survivors she's trying to kill not even walls although it's been a while since we made any major changes to her the nurse has been steadily uh growing in power the introduction of new perks making already strong play styles even stronger it's true uh, from now on, her attacks are going to be, or her blink attacks are going to be considered basic attack. Oh, wait, but it's a large part uh, her blink attacks being considered basic attacks, meaning that she benefits from a wide variety of perks. The nurse can be threatening enough on her own. Blink attacks will now be considered special attacks, which is something that a lot of people have been advocating for. Basically, what this means is that Starstruck, when she carries somebody, anybody within the radius is instantable, noed, in game, insta down, and so on, that stuff will not be able to insta down or get value from. Uh, with her blink attacks anymore or and she won't be able to place uh be able to apply sloppy butcher as well with her blink attacks and so this makes a lot of perks worse on her it makes a lot of perks worse on her and it makes it to where the perks that i imagine people are going to use the most are going to be information perks which are already really good on nurse uh so, but it's just making it where like anything that increases her lethality uh or increases like the amount of slowdown and hits like that that stuff is not going to be as but on nurse because it just can't use blink attacks on it anymore. Now they added a new sound cue when the nurse has fully regenerated all her blinks. This way you'll know when you're ready to blink again, so you don't have to keep an eye on the corner of the screen. It's good. And then they also took some time to revisit some of the nurse add-ons and to add new effects and bring the strongest and weakest uh, closer in line. So they want to like normalize all of the add-ons. Uh, Batman last, last breath. After hitting a survivor with a blink attack, the nurse becomes undetectable for 25 seconds or whatever, 45 seconds. This is, this could be pretty good. 25 seconds of undetectable nurse is really good because it's scary she can, since she can just teleport. Uh, Jenner's last breath. Once all the blinks have been exhausted, the nurse may teleport back to their, her original position. Once she returns to her original position, all blinks charges are restored. Those are kind of interesting add-ons. They said that they're changing all of these. It looks like they're changing the uh, the range for blinks. Steve. Yeah. And so... We'll have to see what all the changes that they make in the PTB. Now, the night. Uh, the night has been out for a little bit over a month, and they're making some changes. Uh, first, the orb that survivors see when the night is creating a pathway for one of the guards. 
the orb will shrink the further the distance that the the knight goes while in the orb form while placing down the guard and so if the knight makes like a really long path then by the end of the path they won't be able to see where the the guard is going to be going which is an interesting change uh that could be really good and so they say when it's a longer path than 10 meters then you won't be able to see the orb at all we'll have to see how that is uh secondly after creating a path longer than 10 meters the knight will gain a haste aspect for a few seconds the longer the path the longer the move speed bonus will last this is actually a pretty smart change uh making it to where if you set down a guard uh path really far away and the survivor just holds w to try to, to counter you or counter your guard uh you can catch up to them a little bit faster since you'll have increased movement speed after you set down that guard and so i like that we'll have to see if that completely remedies things but that adds an, an extra element that i think i think the knight needed and so they could always like make you go faster or stuff like that if it proves not to be effective enough. Uh, third, guards will move to the position they spotted a survivor and begin chasing faster, depending on the length of the patrol path. Like the haste, only a path longer than 10 meters will benefit from this. So it sounds like if you make a really long path, it makes the like detection time of the guards a lot quicker. So if it detects, if you have like a 10, 15 meter path, and the guards see somebody, it'll lock onto that person and start chasing them a lot faster than if you make like a one meter path. So they're really trying to incentivize making longer paths uh, and try to, try to promote that play style, which I like. Because I think that's what makes the, the night unique. Beyond promoting longer paths, we've increased the instant generator regression from guards to 5% from 2.5. But they still don't use any of the perks that you may want to use on them. So, but that's still pretty good, 5%, especially when you can down a guard and then keep on running and it'll continue to regress it's pretty good and then they're also saying <laughs> they uh didn't really like how people were just standing next to the hook and then going into the guard form the orb having no tear radius and so they're putting a maximum amount of time that you can stay in the like the guard setting form to be 10 seconds so you can no longer like campus effectively by just sitting there and like setting down a guard and then like waiting for somebody to come up so that's what they're doing which isn't really that big of a deal 10 seconds is a long time for setting out a guard theory of crows so they said that they got a lot of feedback saying that this map is survivor sided and so the data actually says that as well and so they're going to be changing the map rather than it be a long rectangle they're going to make it a square allowing killers to patrol generators more easily uh and then additionally maze tiles which are like lnt walls or like uh jungle gym stuff like that uh, anything with tall walls uh they've been moved further away from the main building and shack making it harder to combine these strong loops and there was some combinations where you could string together for a while last but certainly not least several new tiles have been added to the map multiple existing tiles that have new foliage added in strategic places to allow trapping killers to better hide their traps looks good for now as you explore and they show one of the new tiles right here it's good uh, i'm glad they're going back and trying to remedy like some of the maps that have problems because stuff like this does make the game feel a lot better because when you get a map that is like a lot more survivor or a lot more killer sided it can really sour your mood i like that they're doing this hopefully it feels a lot better and them saying it feels a lot more square or that it is a lot more square it makes me wonder if it's going to be like wrecker's yard uh, i believe that's the map uh it's the auto haven map that's just purely a square has shack in the middle if it plays like that then i'll probably like this map it'll probably actually be a lot more fun and then finally, this is a huge thing I've been wanting for a while, uh, in-game challenge tracker. So they talk about how there's a lot of times where you don't know if you finish a challenge when you're in the middle of the game, and now they're adding in a challenge tracker. So basically, right here, you can see in the corner, it'll say like how much progress you have for your challenge. So if you have a challenge like fall from a great height while being chased, or cleanse so many totems, or heal so many survivors, it'll tell you in the game in real time uh how close you are to completing it and when you complete it which is amazing that's a very good quality of life change and that's something that i think we've needed for a long time and so i'm really glad they're doing that that's, that's really nice and then they said that this is optional as well you, if you don't want to see that you can turn it off and then there, there will be two different options uh one to indicate progression and then one for completion it sounds like so if you only want to know when you've completed it instead of it staying on your screen the entire time to show like how far along you are then you can do that so that's really good i like that and then game flow improvements uh they're making it to where you can now uh select an archive challenge or like search the store while you're searching for a match 
and it will still say that you're looking for a match in the corner. Very good. So you don't have to unready if you didn't equip a challenge. I really like that. And then they're also new for killer players. You'll be able to customize your non-selected killers while you wait for a match to start. Note the killer you will enter the match with will be the killer that you started the search with. As always, returning the main menu will automatically cancel. So when they say customize, well, I wonder, because customize to me uh, is like changing the cosmetics. But I wonder if I can spend blood points on killers that I like I'm not queuing as. Like if I'm queuing as Billy, can I spend blood points on Clown? Uh and hopefully that's the case. Because that's one of the things that I really don't like as killer. That if I wanna say like I'm playing a lot of Billy because I have a lot of puddings on him. And right now I do have a lot of puddings on Billy just because I'm trying to get him to P one hundred. Uh, if I want to put blood points into clown, because the clown doesn't have as many add-ons, I have to just sit there and just spend blood points on clown without queuing, unless I just want to play a match with them. But even then, if I get a really fast queue, then I'm not going to be able to spend as many blood points. And it just, I, I eventually I do have to just like sit there for like 10, 20 minutes just spending blood points. Uh, and that's kind of annoying. And I wish that I could just like queue up as another killer and then spend blood points in between those queues. But I can play what I want while I put blood points into another killer. And so hopefully that's the case with this. I guess we'll have to see. And then they are also changing how uh, Merciless Killer works. So if you don't know, Merciless Killer is the like in-game screen event that you need in order to get to your adepts. It basically means like double pipping. But they're changing it since like the pipping system doesn't really matter as much anymore. Uh, they're changing Merciless Killer for like your adept achievements to just be four kills. So Energy Hunger is going to be zero. Uh, Brutal is going to be one of two, Ruthless is going to be three, and then Merciless is going to be four. Now, if you want to get an adept achievement for a killer, all you need to do is just kill four people. And I, th I think it's pretty good. Uh, I think that it brings it more in line with a survivor equivalent of escaping uh, for the adept. And yeah, I think it's good. I think it's a lot more clear because I have always hated how like I could play really well in a match, and then because the game determined that I was a little bit too close to a hook one time, Instead of me having an iridescent emblem, I would have a gold emblem. I have all iridescent besides that one gold, and I'd have to keep on doing it again. But I, this is a good change. Uh, all of these are really good changes. Uh, iridescent shard prices. So they're making it to where all original characters with non-licensed outfits, uh, their outfits will be for iridescent shards. So essentially for free with grind. And they've already done this for Trapper, Wraith, Hillbilly, Nurse, Huntress, Doctor, Hag, Dwight, Claudette, Meg, Jake, Nia, and David. All these ones, you can buy all of their non-licensed outfits with shards and also with the Oryx cells if you wanted to. Uh, and then the next update, they're also going to include the Clown, Spirit, Ace, and Fang. And they're going to keep on expanding this. If they're just doing it in batches. I'm assuming there's a lot of stuff on the back end that they have to do in order to change it. So doing it in little batches is good. And then an update on cheating. Cheating was a very big issue uh, last year and the year before. And so I just wanted to give an update. So these are how many cheaters they've banned. So in 2022, they banned the most cheaters they've ever banned, with 64,000 banned. And I've it, from the previous dev updates, it sounds like a lot of these bans happened in like the, the last half of uh, 2022. And so it seems like they're really trying to improve their cheat detection and everything. So working hard to patch vulnerabilities. Hope to share more information soon. And that is the first dev update with the PTP tomorrow. And so I'm I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I think a lot of this stuff is just makes the game feel better. And I think at this point, that is what the devs should be focusing on is just trying to make the game feel as good as it can. The game already has an, <laughs> just a crazy amount of content. And so doing stuff like uh, Activity HUD makes solo queue feel a little bit better, which is very much so needed. Updated Wiggle, uh, I'm still a bit iffy about this, but it's cool. Uh, Changing the nurse, trying to bring her power level a little bit down because she is problematic for like the entire game in terms of balancing. That's a good change. I do like that. Going after her add-ons, I hope they do that to Blight eventually as well because Blight has some very problematic add-ons. Uh, and then with the knight, uh, these seem like pretty good changes. They may not be enough, but at least we're getting on the right path to where possibly the knight could be better. Uh, Area of Crows this is a good change that they're doing, trying to make the map better. In-game challenge tracker, very good quality of life change. Game flow improvements, so where you can equip a challenge when you're queuing, very good change. And then Merciless Killer change, very good. Ears and Shards, very nice. And obviously trying to get rid of cheaters is very good. So I'm really happy with the direction that behavior is going. I'm a lot happier than I was last year. And I know 
may seem like a surprise to some people that I'm feeling a lot more happier about DVD. But if uh, they start messing up again, I obviously will be critical about it. Uh, just because I've been critical about it in the past, so why not? Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy about it. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this update. If you guys like the changes, if you think the, the changes to the nurse are justified or not, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, bye everyone.